After much debate, OSU's blackout campaign is back on. Be sure to show your school spirit at this weekend's big game. Beaver Pride is exploding. Sales from the student store as well as other beaver, beaver retail stores are growing. Find out how much the recent wins are affecting product sales. Midterms are looming just around the corner, but how is this stress affecting student performance? Find out this and more on tonight's episode of the Beaver News. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to your Tuesday night edition of the Beaver News. I'm Christy Wright. And I'm Hayden Wilcox. We're glad you could be with us tonight. Many of you have probably seen the matching t-shirts embroidered with Greek letters around campus. This is a part of the Greek community's campaign to announce that Greek life uh, has finally started here on campus. This year, the Greek community will be holding many events for both the school and Corvallis, which are sure to provide a fun time for all who participate. The many houses that make up Greek life will be starting their philanthropy fundraisers in the next few weeks. Even if you're not a member of a Greek house, you can always get involved with these fundraisers. All of the proceeds from these events are donated to the charity that the house sponsors. Greek philanthropies are a great opportunity to volunteer and to get to know the members that make up the chapters of Oregon State. With homecoming underway, the Greek community is already on the road to getting involved. Multiple houses, both fraternity and sorority, are coming together to participate in various homecoming events. These functions will include decorating houses, building floats for the parade, and showing their ever-growing school spirit. If you're interested in getting involved with some of the Greek philanthropies underway, keep this one in mind. Sigma Chi, one of the fraternities on campus, is holding their fundraiser for Dornbecker's Children's Hospital this week. There are booths and tents set up in the MU where you can go and make a donation to, to the charity. There will also be events going on through the week. If you'd like to attend, the Lip Sync Competition Friday, Friday night held on the Sigma Chi's front lawn. Up Till Dawn is a charity event that raises money to support St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, a hospital that specializes in child health care without cost to the family. Oregon State's Up Till Dawn program is currently sinking members to form an executive council. This council will be in charge of running a campus-wide event that is nationally known. This event occurs winter term, but the planning stages are starting now. If you want to get involved, meet new people, and support a cause, Up Till Dawn will be, will be available. With the Beavers now 5-0, making school history and the Civil War rapidly approaching, student spirit seems to be growing steadily. There is a noticeable difference between this school year's spirit and last year's and is becoming more and more apparent. With students now camping out all night for football tickets and the student section flooded with orange and black, the student body has never been more united. Many people today are complaining about the tickets being unfair because people are cutting in line. Students started camping out at 11 a.m. on Sunday and ended up wrapping around Reeser Stadium. Students found it unfair because people would cut in line. A quote from senior Allie Woodson said, I started camping out at 1.30 p.m. on Sunday, and at 5 a.m. on Monday morning, people started coming out of their cars and started running in front of the line. This is unfair because I camped out in the rain the whole night. There needs to be a better system, end quote. ASOSU is looking to improve this system. Early Monday morning, thousands of students lined the streets next to Reeser waiting for a chance to get their hands on a ticket for this weekend's game. Tents lined the sidewalks accompanied with Beaver fans excited to get their tickets, but what remained after the campout is, what, is what's troubling. The sheer amount of trash left at the scene was horrendous. Many campers did a good job of cleaning up their mess, but this is just a reminder to those who might have forgotten. Clean up your trash. Consider bringing your own trash bags or bin so that the school grounds crew does not have to do it for you. Let's keep Reeser and the rest of our campus looking beautiful. Speaking of camping, I heard you did some camping yourself. I did, in fact. I took, uh, over the summer, I followed the OSU archaeological team out to Idaho to take oh. a look at an uh, archaeological field school. Okay. I believe we have the package now. Now that the Cooper's Ferry Archaeological Field School has been set up, it's time to get in the dirt.
in my hand, I have the tool that we're gonna use the most in our excavation, and that's a trowel. We can sharpen the edge on one side to give us this ability to dig dirt very easily. And we also use a brush, and the brush is also used to just simply sweep up the dirt after we've excavated it. We put it into a dustpan, and that goes into a bucket. All that dirt will go to the screen, and they're gonna look for anything that I've missed when I'm excavating. So we will trowel away 10 centimeters of sediment at a time. We want to do an interval kind of excavation because we want to be able to separate out each part of the site from each other to talk about the youngest part of the site versus the oldest part of the site. Once the ground has been broken, hands and minds alike dive into the ancient earth with simple yet specialized techniques. I think we got a big piece of uh, chert, big chert flake here, and that would have been struck off a big uh, core and then making stone tools. Um, so this would have been a part of a bigger piece that they struck off here, and then this fell to the ground, and along with all these other pieces that they eventually didn't use. The soft sand easily gives way to yield its treasures to those who have passion and careful hands. The students will pass the dirt they've excavated from their units into a set of screens that will use water in order to wash the dirt away. The things that we can find with wet screening include very fragile items, things that wouldn't necessarily show up if you're processing the dirt by dry screening it. Yeah, see, like, a lot of this. We got that over here and all over the place. What do you think? It's just streaky, streaky. Yeah. So this is a projectile point that I just found in the screen. And students armed with a sharp eye begin to see the past unfurl in front of them as they begin to bring together pieces of this prehistoric puzzle. It's still really cool. Um, Dr. Davis estimates it's about 3,000 to 5,000 years ago. This is Hayden Wilcox reporting from Cooper's Ferry for the Beaver News. Before the homecoming football game, OSU will dedicate a new entrance to campus at the intersection of 26 and Western Boulevard that will have a lighted gateway and a brick monument. There will be a ceremony that will celebrate the new entrance. The entrance was a gift from the OSU graduating class of 1960. They raised $100,000 for OSU, which is the largest gift a graduating class has ever given in, o in OSU history. After much consideration from the school, this Saturday's game will still be a blackout. Despite the controversy that arose due to the game's theme and multiple parties disagreeing, many have come to realize that it has nothing to do with racism, but to show the school spirit and wear our colors and school colors proudly as a united student body and community. Even though the women's volleyball team lost during their pink out event to spike out cancer, the support of fans, students, and family were there. There were over 2,000 fans at the event, which is the most attendees this season. The women are on the road for the next two weeks, but will be back for Dad's weekend. Beaver gear is in abundance this year. It's almost impossible to walk into the bookstore without encountering crowds. Spirit gear is definitely in demand due to the Beaver's winning streak. With homecoming week underway and, an, and another home game this Saturday, it would be the perfect time to go stock up in your orange and black to show your school spirit all week long, and especially at the game. According to the Daily Barometer, the Athlete of the Week is our new quarterback, Cody Vaz. The junior quarterback played against BYU and started for the first time in his life. Vaz completed 62.5% of his passes for 332 yards and three touchdowns with no turnovers. Vaz will also start in the homecoming game against Utah in this Saturday's game. Good luck, Vaz. Starting off week four, many students are finding themselves bombarded with hours of studying and have resorted to cramming in last-second study sessions in preparation for midterms. Midterms are often a time that most, most students stress about, so it's important to cope with these stressors in the right way. S stress is known to cause lack of sleep, anxiety, and even susceptibility to illness, so it's important to set aside time to just relax during this chaotic week. 
There are many resources on campus that will help keep stress levels to a minimum. Well, do you have any uh, midterms coming up? I do. I have two, a business and a media one. How about you? Ouch. That, I have one this week. In fact, uh, I believe it's tomorrow, so I better <laughs> get started on that tonight. <laughs> yeah. But let's get back to the news. All right. A recent study on how to treat high cholesterol tells us taking high doses of statin drugs is the best way to go. According to Matt Ido, professor of pharmacy at OSU, stated, quote, statins are proven medications that can reduce heart attacks and strokes by about 30 percent in the patients that need them, end quote. Though statin drugs are a way to reduce low to severe cholesterol, there are side effects such as muscle pain and damage. Those side effects only occur when taken in unacceptable dosage. <clears throat> With basketball season right around the corner, the men's basketball team is preparing themselves for a strong season. This season's roster will be all returning players of last year, except for one, Jared Cunningham, who entered this year's NBA draft. Despite not having the return of Cunningham, the Beavs are looking, to, looking past it and are ready to start the season strong. They hope to work on finishing each game strong this year, which seemed to be a problem for them last season. While with a strong team of returners, they are ready to correct any mistakes and achieve the goals they have set as a team. Today was the last day to register to vote. Student leaders have been working very hard to round up fellow students to register. ASOSU attempted to register 4,000 students, which helped surpass the state's goal of 38,000 people. The ability to register and participate in this year's elections ended at 4 p.m. today. Women's cross country uh, team proved themselves to be big competition at the Charles Bowles Invitational. Now they prepare themselves for the journey to Louisville to run in the NCAA pre-nationals this Saturday. Even though the team is not nationally ranked, the team remains confident that they can compete with top schools in the nation, which is why pre-nationals are so important for the team. The meet provides a preview for the NCAA championships that are held in mid-November. It will be a difficult path, however. The team must first quality, uh, qualify during the Pac-12 championships on October 27th. Six graduates will gather at OSU October 19th to be honored by the OSU Alumni Association. The following people are Celia Austin, Ellen Bishop, Roosevelt Credit, Gail Fitzpatrick, Shelton Louie, and this year's recipient of Young Alumni Award, Bridget Burns. The public is welcome to join them at a gala dinner October 19th at the Alumni Center starting at 6 p.m. Tickets are $20 for students. Before we end tonight's segment, we're going to do a quick weather report for you. Today we experienced some great weather, but it looks as if tomorrow might show the end that with the clouds coming in. That's right, Christy. On Wednesday, we're going to see a high of 66 with a low of 37. On Thursday, the clouds will stick around, but we're still uh, not expecting any, uh, any rain. On Thursday, we'll hit a high of 70 degrees, and following that, we'll see a high of 63 degrees on Friday, which means we're heading back into a rainy weekend. On Saturday, we're expecting a high of 55 and a strong chance of rain, followed by more rain on Sunday. Well, that's all the news we have. That's all the time we have for you tonight. I'm Hayden Wilcox. And I'm Christy Wright. Thank you for joining us this evening, and have a great night.